Hachi and I'm from Run Network and today I wanted to make a quick video about uh, outbound connectivity uh, within Azure uh, using a public load balancer and uh, through a Palo Alto firewall and then just testing uh, the connectivity and some tips around uh, what you should potentially look out for. Okay, so as you can see here on the right hand side I've got a diagram of the lab that I've got set up. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's a, a single series uh, VM instance in a pool, a Palo Alto uh, firewall uh, that connects out to a load balancer with a public IP address and out to the internet. Um, just to point out also not all protocols are supported um, for outbound traffic going uh, through the load balancer. I'll talk about this a little bit later on in, in, in a bit more detail. Uh, but just to ensure that, you know, uh, if you're considering deploying, uh, you probably will do uh, with a load balancer, uh, especially, and the public IP, and then taking the panel also into consideration. Uh, the standard SKU um, uh, for deployment for uh, public IPs and then for load balancers uh, goes hand in hand. You've got to ensure that they match. You can't have a basic SKU on a public IP and a standard SKU on a load balancer. You just have a conflict and they won't work. Uh, do you also, uh, you, when you're using the standard SKU, you, you've also got to ensure that you attach the NSG uh, to uh, the interface or the subnet. Otherwise, again, it won't work. The connectivity. Uh, won't work and it will fail. Uh, you will have to set this up. Um, so for the outbound connectivity, um, not all protocols are supported. Um, for example, ICMP is uh, one of them. Uh, ESP uh, for IPsec is is not supported. And um, I will just bring up a document uh, to highlight what we have here and. Uh, that will give a little bit of explanation, but it doesn't specifically tell you, but it does and it doesn't, and I'll show you the documents in one moment. Okay, so this is the official uh, Microsoft uh, document uh, relating to, relating to uh, outbound connections uh, scenario overview. So the one specifically for us is this one here, uh, the public load balance associated with the VM and no public IP address on the VM instance for that interface. So the untrust interface or the external interface that's going to be used in the pool, you've got to ensure there's no public IP address on that. And the method that I use is SNAT uh, with port masquerading paths uh, on the load balancer. So the load balancer will be doing the SNAT and the path for you. And here, a lot of people just tend to skip past this important bit here because um, it does say uh, TCP and UDP, but it doesn't define clearly in the sense, uh, I'm sitting on the fence a little bit uh, that other protocols won't work, but you know, this bit sort of just gets skipped past and people go to here and go, oh, okay, I've set it all up and it's not working, why it's not? Well, you know, other protocols won't work. For example, ICMP it won't work because it's only specifically for um, a TCP, UDP, uh, and the load balancer, uh, as we say, is not uh, fully functional in supporting all protocols. So not all protocols work, so only TCP and UDP. Okay, so now I will just show you an example of a uh, protocol that works and a protocol that does not work. Okay, so uh, before we uh, do the demonstration, let's just quickly have a look at Azure and let's just have a quick look at the uh, firewall and load balancer. So this is my firewall here. And uh, these are the interfaces attached. Um, let's have a look. So ETH0 is my uh, management interface with the public IP as the internal IP. And here's the NSG group that's attached for uh, inbound and outbound. As you can see, the outbound is allowed out to internet. So let's have a look at ETH1. Uh, again, same. Uh, the only difference is there's no public IP attached here because uh, it's going to use a load balancer public IP for outbound connectivity. Uh, again, the outbound uh, uh, port rules allow out to the internet. Uh, ETH2 I am not using for this test. 
and uh, it, yeah, it's just there in the background. But one critical bit I'd like to point out is, as you can see here, it's the management interface that has a public IP address on here. Now, this interface doesn't have a public IP, it has a private IP. However, uh, you s still have to apply an NSG. If you don't apply an NSG to this interface, it won't work. So even though the public IP is assigned, uh, a standard SKU public IP is assigned to the uh, management interface, it's assigned to the instance. So in this case, uh, you still have to apply the NSG. You'd be thinking, well, I don't need it. I don't need the NSG because it should only be need needed for the uh, the public IP. But no, it's for the public IP is attached to the instance. Therefore, any interface that is to be used uh, has to have an NSG applied to it. Otherwise, it won't work. If I remove this NSG, it it, it won't work. So just bear that in mind. Okay, let's have a look at the load balancers. And again, it's pretty standard setup. Uh, I've got my uh, front end IP here, so this will be my source uh, 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 NAT IP that my outbound connectivity uh, that it'll be used for. Uh, the back end pool uh, has only got uh, one VM, and that's the uh, interface, and that's the IP. And the health probe is just checking uh, for port. Uh, 22 and uh, it's used by HTTPS rule and this is just our HTTPS rule uh, that has uh, HTTPS connectivity into the load balancer uh, but this is for inbound into uh, the Azure environment so it's not critical for the outbound connectivity but I'm just showing you the setup here uh, on the load balancer. Okay, so that's it, and uh, let's move on to the demonstration of a failed test and a test that pass. Okay, so uh, I've just SSH'd uh, to uh, uh, the firewall, and let's just do a quick test where it fails and this is one a lot of people use you probably use I simply go hey it's not working but let's just do a uh, show interface all and that's the IP that we want then uh, host for example you'd expect a response back from uh, Google and you'd look at the logs and everything go, hey, it's not working well. It's not supported, so yeah, therefore it won't work. So that this this will just fail. And, and you know, a lot of people get stumped. A lot of people start with this and will and, and we'll get stumped as, as, as the previous documentation that we've been through. Uh, you know, iSIMP is not supported, it's only TCP and UDP. So in this case, uh, what we can do is do a SSH connection to... Um, resource on the internet uh, uh, that, that is available freely so let's uh, go to an IP that I found that is available that's a SFTP server and uh, let's try this there we go so we are in and there we go so that's passed and it's out and you know uh, uh, that it works so just be careful with unsupported protocols. Uh, you get a failure. ISMP won't work, and you know it's only for TCP and UDP. Okay, so that's the end. And uh, thank you for uh, watching this video. And uh, you know, if there's anything or any questions, uh, leave them in the comment, or you can contact us directly. And uh, I'll be making some more videos. They are already in the pipeline and I hope you're enjoying uh, what's coming out. And, you know, if there's anything in particular you'd like, like I say, leave a comment or get in touch and we'll try and accommodate. Otherwise, take care and see you soon. Bye for now.